the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Last time in our Bible study, we saw how our Lord Jesus Christ, at the end of his visit in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles, again was having a debate with the Jews at the temple in Jerusalem. And some of them concluded that he had a demon. Some other people concluded that a man who heals a man who was born blind cannot have a demon. So that was the end of the visit of the Lord to the temple in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles. And then the rest of chapter 10 is dedicated to another visit that the Lord uh, had at the temple in Jerusalem, this time for the Feast of Dedication or Hanukkah. St. John the Evangelist relates this in continuation of the visit that the Lord had at the temple in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles because the discussion that he had with the occasion of the Feast of Dedication three months later, the discussion that the Lord had with the Jews at the temple in Jerusalem is related to the previous discussion he had with them at the Feast of Tabernacles. So in verse 22 of the 10th chapter of his gospel, St. John the Evangelist says that now it was the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem and it was winter because indeed the Feast of, of Dedication or Hanukkah happens in December. And because it was winter, Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. It was a covered area of the temple and it was a little bit warmer in that area of the temple. Then the Jews surrounded him and said to him, how long do you keep us in doubt? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered them, I told you and you do, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name, they, they bear witness of me. Indeed, so many times the Lord told them who he was. He told them that he was the son of God, that he and the father are one. And so many times they would not believe it. So many times he worked signs to prove that indeed he is the light of the world. He is the son of God. He is the living water, but they would not believe the signs also. This is why he just tells them, I told you and you do not believe. The works that I do in my father's name, they bear witness of me, but you do not believe because you are not of my sheep, as I said to you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. In order to hear the word of God, you have to belong to the flock of Christ. Only those who are open who have their hearts and their minds open to hear the words of Jesus, believe in him. And this, this was true in those times, and this is also true today. So many people today hear the word of God, they hear the preaching, they hear the gospel, God works miracles in their lives, and they still don't see, don't hear. But on the other hand, there are people whose minds, whose minds and hearts are open and whose eyes are open to see the works of God in their life and to hear the, the word of God and they believe in God. And then the Lord says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me and I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. And no one is able to snatch them out 
of my father's hand. Because as we could see, the Sanhedrin, the great council of the Pharisees was trying to snatch out all those who believed in Jesus. And especially we could see how they snatched out, they put out of the synagogue, the man who was born blind and he was un unhealed by Jesus. This is why he tells them, and I give them eternal life. Those who believe in me, those who are part of my flock shall never perish. Neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater than all. God is greater than any council of religious leaders. And no one is able to snatch them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. Now, this was something that they could not take very well. And because of this, the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Because they knew that by saying that the father and he, Jesus, are one, he was making himself one with God the Father and equal with God the Father. He was declaring himself again to be God. So they took up stones again to stone him. The Greek word for took up stones, which was translated with took up stones here, is in fact they carried stones. These are big stones. They really wanted to take big stones and to stone him to death. Jesus, Jesus answered them, Many good works I have shown you from my Father. For which of those works do you stone me? The Jews answered him, the Jews answered him saying, for a good work, we do not stone you, but for blasphemy. And because you, being men, make yourself God. Very clearly, we're, we want to stone you for, blas for blasphemy because you, being men, make yourself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he called them gods, to whom the word of God came and the scripture cannot be broken, do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the son of God. So here, Jesus was quoting from Psalm 82, verse 6, which says, I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. This was already revealed by God to us in the Old Testament. God was speaking to people, to the Jews. I said, you are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. This is what God intended for all of us from the beginning. This is why he gave, he gave life to human beings, to Adam and Eve, to be his children. When we as human beings fail from staying in God, in the love of God the Father, when we fail to be children of God, the Son of God, the eternal Son and Word of God, became human to reveal to us that indeed each and every one is a child of God. This was already, this idea was already introduced to us in the prologue of the Gospel of John, when John says that Christ, the Word of God, came to his own and his own did not receive him, but as many as received him, to them, he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, who are born not of blood, nor of, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This teaching is crucial in the Orthodox Church. This passage in the Gospel of John is very difficult for many other Christians not belong or non-Orthodox Christians, they don't know what to do, what to make of this passage in the Gospel of John when Jesus said, says, is it not written in your law? I said, you are gods. If he calls them gods to whom the word of God came, the scripture cannot be broken. 
do you say of him whom the father sanctified and sent into the world, you are blaspheming because I said, I am the son of God? Most Christians believe that Jesus is the son of God. But when it's about us being God with a small g, that blows their mind. This is what Jesus revealed to us. And this is the entire, this is, of course, you know, our teaching about deification, about becoming children of God, about becoming like God. And this is what Jesus is speaking very clearly about in this passage. So, as St. Athanasius the Great would say in the, at the beginning of the fourth century, God became human to make us divine. Or St. Basil the Great would say that the human being is a being who received the order to become God with a small g. Or as Father Tom Hopko would say so correctly that everything that Christ is by nature, we are to become by grace. By nature, he is the son of God and he is God by nature, by grace, we are also, all of us are called to become like God, to become gods with a small g ourselves. We will never replace God, but we are called to become like him. So after, again, revealing his teaching, after telling them that, yes, I am the son of God, and you are called to become like me. You are called to become children of God. They don't get it. So this is why in the next few words, the Lord says, if you, if you do not do the works of my, if I, excuse me, if I do not do the works of my father, do not believe me. But if I do, though you do not believe me, believe the works that you may know and believe that the father is in me and I in him. If you don't believe my words, believe because of the works that I am doing, because as the son of God, I am doing the work of God. And once again, the Lord makes a very strong connection between what we believe, what he be, be, between belief and work, between beliefs and works. And this is also very important for us because as children of God, it is very, very important to believe in God, to believe that we are called to become children of God, but also to do the works of the children of God as the Son of God did the work of God. Therefore, they sought again to seize him, but he escaped out of their hand. And he went away again beyond the Jordan to, to the place where John was baptizing at first, and there he stayed. Then many came to him and said, John performed no sign, but all the things that John spoke about these men were true, and many believed in him there. So the Lord withdrew beyond the Jordan to the place where John was baptizing at first, so east of the, of the Jordan River. And there, of course, many of the people who knew of John the Baptist, who knew of his teaching, and he, who knew of John's witness of Jesus, believed in the Lord because they saw the works of the Lord. So in this passage, St. John the Evangelist introduces us to, or takes us to, to another step, to a higher level into a teaching that we're gonna encounter a lot in the rest of, the, of his gospel, the teaching about the indwelling of the son in the father and the father in the son, and also the indwelling of God within us. In the next few chapters, we will see, especially in the discourse of the Lord, at the Last Supper, the Mystical Supper, we will hear the Lord speak a lot 
about this indwelling of God the Father in him and of the Father and of the Son in us, which is a main teaching of the Orthodox Church. So God is with us now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen.